ready to present to us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. I'm gonna, can I, yes, I can. I'm gonna share my screen because I have a mini, like, pictures and presentation to go with it. Great. So, um, while this loads, um, thank you for giving me this time to present my Eagle project. I am, um, I've worked, I spent a lot of time so far working on it, and I'm excited to, to do it, and I'm excited to share it with you all. Uh, I don't know why this won't. I'll just do it like this, I guess. Is this? I don't want to take, like, wait forever for it to load. So, um, um, my, my, um, so I have a question for y'all. Have any of you guys ever been to a, um, jazz performance at, at ETHS before? No. 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 I've actually been to one and been in back, so yes. Oh, great. So, um, my project sponsor and band director, Mr. Bufus, I came to him and we were brainstorming ideas for a project and then we realized that our current jazz library is a complete disaster. And having an unorganized jazz library means it's hard to find music because inside this, you can see in this picture in the bottom right, there is no organization whatsoever. The music's basically just thrown into these filing cabinets. So my project would consist of taking this music from the cabinets that are shown on the right into the um, these red new cabinets which are shown on the left. <clears throat> so um, this project um our the goal of this project is to get the music from the old from the old cabinets inside of the new cabinets, which this process would um this process includes getting music, taking them out, organizing the music so it's neatly organized in order so like trum trumpet one through five Axes is one through five, all of it. and this allows us to see how many parts are missing, and so we can write it down. Once the music is organized, we then bring it to a database enterer, which will have a database that goes along with these new cabinets, which allows us to easily find music, find where they are in the cabinets, see like what type of swing chart it is, and if there's any missing parts, or if we don't own it, so we can buy it. And then once they get to them, they put the um, name, the composer, the publisher, and the date, all that information, and they put it in. Then we have, and then once they put it inside the database, they will then put it inside of small 5 8 inch boxes, which will be made by a boxer. And then once they're inside, they, um, finally the runner, they will grab the completed boxes, they will label them with a number, and then they will place them in numerical order onto the new shelves. Once we have, once all the boxes are organized, we will then print labels out with the um, names and everything on it. Should and then we just mm -hmm. take the stickers and just put them onto the boxes and to prevent like, um, unorganized to, so that all the boxes are neatly printed and you can read them. So this project consists of four goals. We have the sorter, the database center, the runners, the and goals. the and the boxers. Each rules is given to um, everyone a week before the project. With all these, um, with all the um, pro the um, volunteers, I estimate we will need 25 volunteers. We will have eight sorters, eight database enterers. Switch your screen. What? Go to your next screen. Oh, wait. We'll have um, eight sorters, eight database enterers, then we'll have one boxer and two runners. And for each role, we will have one extra people, in, one extra person in case someone doesn't show up or we have, or something happens in the project. All the, um, the sorters and database centers work in mini teams. So they will be at a table together, working together. So in basically a mini assembly line, but with eight different assembly lines. <laughs> Within each role, um, the sorter and database and the runner I will, there will be basically team leads, so there will be one, one sorter who is basically a lead, which allows them to um, 
they'll be um, trained thoroughly in with thoroughly in their role so they can help other people other people with their role um, um with any questions or um, help them with anything they really have on it so um the reason why we need eight different mini teams is because with over 1,000 different pieces the um because there's over a thousand pieces and we have and we need to organize them it can t- take a maximum five minutes to get one piece from the old shelf into the new shelf and i'll estimate this project will take around eight hours in one day if we can get it which shouldn't be too hard <clears throat> so then the, we have the on the leadership side of things why like I said before, there will be one team lead for each for each role that a week before I will be given to them. And a week before, I'll also assign everyone different roles, and I will explain the, um, to all the sorters how they, how they can sort the music and the specific list, because, which because to sort the music, there's a specific list to get from the, um, from the saxes one through five and all the way down through percussion in the stack. I will also train them to find where to find all the the names, any missing parts, and where to find the style of jazz it has. And on the date when the project comes around, so all of this was a week before the project. Now during the day of the project, I will I'll have everyone. I will explain the um, I'll explain the same process of getting music from the old to the new cabinets and me and my trained experts we will demonstrate this project by we will take one music from the one entire one folder and we will organize it together and and go through the process so thoroughly by explaining each different part where you can, they can find the names because it's very important they get the right names so the volunteers will need to be, have music backgrounds for this and I will, we will then show them where to enter the information, where to enter the into the into the database, and how to assign a shelf number, because that inside the cabinet they're organized by shelf number instead of organized by name or composer, because that would just because the more pieces you add, the more complicated it would be to organize it alphabetically in any way. And so inside the jazz room, this is where it takes place. So we have eight different, eight different teams of people working together in this. And we have two runners that go by. And the, so first, the sorters, they, grab, they, go, they would go to the old cabinets and they grab one piece and they'd sort it. And they would, um, this is, I mean, um, this is how the room would be arranged. So on the day of the project, we would assign, we would basically set up the room like this, and at the end of the day, we would take it down. So, does everyone understand the process of how it works? Or, or wait, is everyone muted? Never mind then. So, um, <clears throat> does anyone have any questions about the process or how it works? I did have one question on your databasing. Are you guys allowed to scan it? Scan the music? No, we're going to be making the database in a in the Google Sheets form, so we can have multiple people editing it once, and there'll be rows of the title, the name, the composer name, everything else, and if there's any missing parts to it. And scanning the sheets would make it just ginormous. Jack, how many hours do you have invested in this project so far, if you had to guess? So far, I've worked over 20 hours coming up with the process and working with my sponsor and Dr. Richter. Okay. What do you anticipate being one of your challenges that, uh, that you might, some of the challenges that you thought of at this point that might pop up for you? The challenges, um... There's many things like leadership wise, since this project is, um, we're basically doing the same thing for eight hours straight. It could be very repetitive. So 
a challenge for me and the other um, leads would be to make sure everyone's staying focused and that it's very important that they're entering the they don't like um days off because they could miss like a composer name and put the um publisher's name for the composer in it's important to keep all that information correct so the database is accurate or else there's no reason to have a database if it's all wrong. Got it. Hey, Jennifer, this, this is Dean. Um, question about um, putting a lot of effort into getting this all organized, which looks, looks great. Um, have you given any thought as to how the constructions for continuing its, its uh, maintenance afterwards, mm -hmm. like how um, the organization of things will be you know, structured and how people can enter information in after this? Mm -hmm. So since we're organizing this by a shelf number that allows us, if we have a new piece, we can go to the, um, well, you can search the database to make sure we don't already own it. And if we did own it, you could um, you could find the shelf number and the four, um, these four shelves, they're gonna be like shelf numbers. So the left one will be top to bottom. It'll just go from one to how many, however many numbers there are in the database. So. If we have a new one, we would be able to grab, take one, go to the bottom, find the um, next available shelf number, and we just put it at the end of the line because with, we'd be able to search up its name or composer and find where it is in the database to grab it in the future. Okay, thanks. We talked about that beforehand. There is, is there still some fundraising involved in the project? If yes, so can you lose or can you explain a little bit what you have in mind? I'm sorry, can you say it again? The, I fundraising, the fundraising part for the process, do you still have that in your planning? Yes. So so can you we need a, each box is around 80 cents each, so in total we need around $800 for this and to get the money. Uh, there are many organizations like Bob Rogers Travel, J.W. Pepper, the Evanston Band and Orchestra, and the Music Institute of Chicago I can go to for um, corporate donations and to help with fund the boxes. And I can also, um, with Mr. Bufus's help, I can email and get, I can get help from all of the band families to donate to this and to the project. We need extra permission and all that. Yeah, I know. Hey, Jack, what is the purpose of the database, and how do you envision it? Envision that database scaling over time? Is this going to be something where, uh, for example, students would have access to the database after you left ETHS, and then would be able to go find um, music? So, can you paint me a little picture as far as what that looks like on the go forward? Because the sub database is in Google, we can easily link share or share by adding people to the um, document to for people to be able to view. And um, the purpose of this database is to be able to see what charts we have. So if we want to play this chart, we could search up in the database, then we can easily find where it is because it gives us a number and the data inside these four shelves, it's organized by one, two, three, four, all the way down the road because this is important because the currently there's no database or any form of organization we the school and we have no idea how what charts we have and if we even own it and if we do own it being able to find it is just a nightmare about a database what was uh, the question i think the question was who will then after you left the school have the database and maintain the database is this mr buffett Mr. Bufus and the band directors will own the database and they can let students uh -huh. see what charts they have if they need to, like, get any pieces for combos or whatever groups they're doing. And so I won't own it. I, the school will own the database and anyone's able to view it. Jack, I had a question. You mentioned you know, a challenge being to keep the scouts motivated for eight hours. Did you think about maybe breaking this up over over two days? Um, 
my sponsor, he really wants this project to be done in one day, but I've planned to have, like, it will kind of be scheduled with, like, a school day. Like, we have a 40-minute period and, like, at, like a 5- to 10-minute break, then a 40-minute work period, then 5- to 10-minute break, and then around lunchtime we'll have, like, a 40-minute lunch break. And people can, like, can take a break from this so they're not working eight hours straight because working eight hours straight on the same thing, people would easily lose focus and get distracted. Okay, good. I think you've thought about it pretty uh, pretty thoroughly. Thank you. Hey, Jack, do you have any contingencies for social distancing in case those uh, that needs to be followed? Um, currently, I'm not. With all this um, social distancing, the school is closed, so we won't be able to complete this project to um, social distancing. Things are gone, and the school will let us back in the building will let us in the building and other groups in the building because we can't, because all the music is inside the building and the new cabinets are drilled and, and like bolted to the walls. So we won't be able to do it until those guidelines are gone. So Jack, how are you planning to do lunch? Are you going to ask people to bring lunch? Are you providing lunch as part of your program? Um, I plan on providing lunch and because we'll have about um, like 25 people, I can order pizza from Little Caesars or wherever, wherever is close. I'm guessing there. And I can fund the lunch and provide lunch for everyone so people don't have to worry about bringing their own lunch. Okay. Um, Jake? Oh. I'm jumping over somebody. Um, so are you, I take are you sorting some of the information or some of the music? Are you getting rid of some of it? We aren't getting rid of any music. So you're not getting rid of anything, okay. The reason we sort it is so we can see what parts we have because if we choose a piece and we're missing, like, for example, all the trombones, we would have to buy a new, we'd have to buy a new one of it because we don't have the part. And then, yeah. um, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, yeah. I, and also about the cabinets. I was just wondering, are they, are they keeping the cabinets or are they getting, are you having to get rid of those cabinets, the old ones? I'm not exactly sure what we're doing with the old ones. I'm sure they'll be repurposed somewhere in the school or even in the jazz room. Okay. So. so what is your safety concerns you have to think about in terms of injuries or accidents? Or what are your precautions? From like a bunch of stuff like that for injuries, um, making sure like I'll start here. Um, no people, there shouldn't be any heavy lifting involved. Maybe for like example, when we're cleaning up or taking down, because there could be like an amp somewhere or like what just stands we have to move in. That could be something. And also, there's water fountains all around the um school there's one right outside the hallway so i'd be urging people to take water breaks if they're feeling somewhat lightheaded or even just slightly thirsty i'm going to be encouraging people to constantly be drinking water and if they need to take a short break because of whatever i allow them to take a short break It is going to be on a weekend, so it's Saturday or Sunday. It's not going to be during, like, a school day. Your volunteers, are they um, they all relatively going to be properly trained and the ability to do this these tasks? How much training are you going to have to require for them? And have you allotted enough time to do that training if necessary? Um, my... Training, uh, they'll have to um, know, like, for the um, sorters, they need to know, like, they need to have a general knowledge of what parts are, um, where to find them out of how many parts there are, what kind of piece it is, and be able to know, like, how to organize them. And the database center, they'll be, they, they will need to know how to find the um, composer, arranger, publisher, the title, the type of chart, and all that, all of the um, different 
and all of those different names and know where to put them in the database. And this will, all the other initial training will be done a week before the project takes place. So on the day of the project, I can, I'm going to review it and people will already know what they need to do and we can get right to work. Are there any other questions? I have one, Jack. Um, do any of your helpers need to know anything about music or how to read music? Mm -hmm. There are some jobs we have that don't require music knowledge, but for um, like the sorters and database centers, I will um, I would urge them to know how to um, read music and find the names because in some pieces they can be different places and they need to know where to find them, and if they're missing, know how to, like, acknowledge that. I have one more question about volunteers. Um, this, I, this is going to be done on the premises of ETHS um, mm -hmm. on, a, on a weekend, you said? Yes, it's going to take place on a weekend. Um, are you, so for any volunteers who are ETHS students or who are not ETHS students, do you know ETHS, ETHS policies on bringing students into the school um, during, on that time? Because they're pretty, they have some very strict policies. I can get, um, me and my sponsor, we're gonna work with the safety to, get, to make sure like they know that the project is going on and how many other people we're gonna be bringing into the building so we'd be able to comply with them. Oh, I have a question. Um, do you know whether or not, like what the condition of most of the files are? I know in our office, we come across this where we find things that are incomplete or hard to read or um, do you have like a thought about that? or? Yeah. Yeah, some jazz pieces can date back, that we own probably date back to like, since like when the first, when the program was first created back in like the 19, like 40s or they can date all the way back to then, which I'm guessing some pieces will have music missing. We may even have repeat pieces. So that's why I want people to have music knowledge. So, you know, like if some are diff written like different, like, written differently, they'd know where to find the proper information to enter into the database. Are there any other questions? Well, Jack, I'm only one voice in all of this, but I, I want to commend you for picking a project that um, involves two of your greatest passions and, and combining them into to one project. That takes a lot of thoughtfulness and intention. And so I want to commend you for that because that's, that's, a, that's a, a big thing to do. Thank you. Yep, I could not agree more. Thank you. Are there any other thoughts, questions, or anything about it? No? Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me present my project to you guys today. And Great job, and good luck. And right now, get your signature. I will yeah. talk yeah. to yeah. all yeah. Thank you. Really well, well prepared. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Very nicely yeah. done. It sounds like you've really thought it through, and this will be really helpful to the um, conductor or the, sorry, the mm -hmm. jazz leader. Yeah, I've met multiple times with Dr. Richter and my sponsor, and Carl's working this out, and I've spent a long time like revising this to where it is now, and I have much more. Great. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You want me to like 
leave you guys be for the committee. Yes, I, I think you can <laughs> run away and be free. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you again. Bye. Nice Bye. job, Jack. Bye. Bye. Great job. Yeah, that's nice.